Hey, good afternoon guys. Tush coming at you Tuesday, September the 26th, I think. Let me just get closer to the TV. Yeah, 26th, just coming up to uh, 410 in the afternoon. And uh, got a few more days off on vacation, so I thought I would uh, start trying to get back into the 250 a little bit. We still have the TR6 home, so I just pushed it out in the uh, driveway and covered it up. Because we plan on getting it uh, a little dusty in the garage in the next uh, day or two. We're going to start working slowly back on the 250 and the first thing I need to do is to sort of clear everything that I've kind of piled around it or in it over the last few weeks. So we're in the process of doing that, putting some parts away where they should be. I've got Alpha parts in here, I've got TR6 parts in here, so we've got to store those away before we do anything. Uh, I've got to move the engine block and a few other little bits that I took off the TR6, getting it ready for the trip down to the trials. So we've got the... Uh, axles, uh, stub axles there, the brake rotors, we got the lever shocks over here so we've got to pack those up and put them away. And then really what I want to do is I want to, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to clean up this area here and here a little bit better because I realize now that I've got a little bit of a issue with the rear valence. I had a little issue before but I've got more of an issue after visiting uh, British Car Day and doing some research. This panel here actually should have a few little cut marks in it. Uh, a little cut mark here, and there's a little cut mark up here. So there's a little panel actually that goes in from here to here. And when that's painted, you can actually see the line still there present. And obviously mine has a significant amount of work done on the rear valence and a significant amount of Bondo, so those lines are no longer present. So I want to make sure that I have those lines when I finish this car so I'm going to grind away that uh, paint and filler to see what's going on uh, with as far as this replacement panel that's on here currently I know there's been a big patch scabbed in the middle of it um, but I want to find out what's going along the side so really what I want to do is just sort of a small exploratory here on the right and on the left and see what we have to work with all right we'll come back in a bit Alright guys, 6 p.m. and we've got the car uh, cleaned out pretty much and some things put away. We got a little bit more space around the car. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to break the grinder out. We've got the air compressor charged up. We're going to break the grinder out and see what we've got below these uh, left and right areas that I discussed earlier. So we'll go to town, we'll get the DA out, we'll get the grinder out, and uh, we'll grind off some Bondo. Alright guys, uh, here's a little bit what I'm uh, dealing with on this rear end. I do have some rust repairs to make here. You can see some uh, perforations along here. So that's got to be fixed. Now, as mentioned, there's a couple of cut lines in here. So the valence has uh, basically a center section to it, uh, top and bottom. So I believe that section ends here and you can see some brazing. So I would say that's pretty close to where it's supposed to end for the top section. And then I believe this should end lower, probably around here. I'm going to have to check some photos, but I believe it should end around there. You can see there's a lot of brazing done there, but that looks a little too high to me. So what I'm going to do is uh, have a look at some photos and do some research. But from the photos I've seen, this is the uh, reversing light. The um, cut line seems to be just above where the actual round rubber bezel goes for the reverse light. So we'll have a look at more pictures of that. On this side, as again, you can sort of see where it's been cut uh, around the middle here, where the brazing is. So, And then here again, it looks too high to me. I think it's supposed to be down lower. But again, we'll check some photos. What I'm going to have to do probably is I'm going to have to make a cut in here, maybe a wide cut, and we'll do a inverse sort of flange and bend it in because what would happen is these two flanges would butt together and there would be a slight crease there. So I think I'm going to have to introduce a cut into this panel somehow. Um, but anyway, we'll get the approximate locations of where we're supposed to be. There's some rust here happening on the inside. So obviously all this lip has to be cleaned up in here as well and on the outside before we go uh, too much further. Anyway, I just thought I'd give you a quick look at what I'm dealing with as far as the rear valence is concerned. Just a few more things on the rear valence before we go here. 
you can see this has got quite a few holes drilled in it and probably a little bit of rust perforation there as well so we're gonna have to work on the flanges you can see it's actually torn there and I can you can see that I can actually move that in some regards that may have been cut like I think on the other side I think it was actually physically cut so they could actually move the valence up or down to meet the fenders um, the way um, they were fitting so um, anyway we're gonna do some repair on this flange as well once we figure out uh, where the fenders are going to sit um, so just want to give you a quick look at that it's pretty much the same on both sides actually it's cut on the other side on the underneath as well so they could sort of squeeze this in and pull it out so they were kind of cutting and shutting let's say the uh, bottoms of the fenders as well to meet the uh, rear fender the best they could so lots of repair there to do as well anyway I think it might be salvageable um, this, re this uh, re valence repair panel I've looked around for it online and unfortunately it's not available from any of the suppliers I've checked until the end of the year approximately and that's the best guesstimate that they can get before they get a whole new re rear valence in. I don't really want to go there if I don't have to so we may just play around and try to repair this. If I'm not happy with the repair I can always order one and replace it uh, when it comes in but I think we should be able to work with what we've got.